to our session today. I am your instructor, CPA Ringo Frederick. In our session today, it is a continuation of what we started earlier on. Remember, we've been doing uh, this uh, QA under foundation level, which was just introduced under this revised syllabus, CASNEB revised syllabus. So, in our session today, it is a continuation of what we started earlier on. In our previous classes, you had introduced the concepts of functions. And uh, we talked about uh, linear function, quadratic function, uh, cubic functions. And today's session, I want us to look at application of linear function in business. Application of linear function in business. Because if you can recall, we mentioned that uh, for linear function, in this case we're talking about application of linear function. Application of linear function in business application of linear function in business application of linear function in business and if you can recall my good students we mentioned that for linear function it is always expressed in a form of y is equal to a plus bx where we explained this variable this is a one degree polynomial function and remember in our previous class we had explained these variables whereby you mentioned that y this is always known as a dependent variable a is always a constant uh, term it is of course as a fixed talk about b in that case we mentioned that it was a constant basically this is a slope of course and x we mentioned it as what independent variable so i believe that we had did uh, we done this in our previous in our previous classes so today's class allowed us to see how this function is usually being applied in, in business. And these are some of the areas whereby linear function will be applied in business. Number one application you can talk of where linear function can be applied in business. We normally tend to talk about when calculating the salesman's earnings. So talk about number one application, talk about computation of salesman earnings. Computation computation of salesman earnings computation of salesman's earnings uh-huh talk about number two we normally tend to talk about cvp that is of course uh cost volume profit analysis cost volume uh profit analysis cost volume profit analysis also it can be applied in determination of market equilibrium determination of a market equilibrium of market equilibrium of market equilibrium it is etc so these are some of the applications of linear function in business this is some of the application of linear function in business so for us to understand it clearly we'll also be handling some illustration questions which will open our mind wide to understand this concept of what of application of linear function in business so to this point let us start with the first one. How will you use linear function to compute the salesman earnings? That's a very important thing to note. So talk about number one application, computation of salesman's earnings. Computation, computation of our salesman's earnings. Computation of salesman's earnings. I want us to understand how will we use linear equation in computing the salesman's earnings. Take for example this case, not even for example, it is usually a tradition that if you are a salesperson, of course there will be that minimum amount that will be expected to earn as at the end of the month. In addition to that, you will be having some commissions which you will be earning based on what you or not you sold during that month. So basically, for salesman, you'll be having, I'll be ha you'll see that I'll be having a component of fixed amount plus any commissions that we'll be earning. So you'll find that for us to determine the total earnings of a salesman commission, for us to determine our total earnings of a salesman, total earnings, we'll be talking about the basic pay that is of course fixed. The basic pay, this one we are very sure that you're going to get plus what? Plus any commission that you'll be having. And this commission of course will come with what? Will come with uh, or rather it will be as a result of what we've sold during that period, right? So in other words, we can term our earnings to be 
fixed term it as a basic pay plus this commission will come with whatever that you've sold during that period term it as what term it as bx or bq so where e will represent our total earnings my good students f will represent that basic pay that regardless of whether i uh, regardless of whether we make sales or not i'm going to earn a basic amount plus the commission so bx this will represent the total commission and ideally this is what maybe talk of it as a what pay per unit this is a commission per unit commission per unit whereas x represent what the number of units that you sold during that period so as you can clearly see that function the salesman uh, uh, earnings will denote the concept of what linear function and if you can recall the characteristics of linear function that we had looked at in our previous class so i want us to understand this concept by handling an illustration question i'm going to share this question in our screen kindly you can take a screenshot for those who are using our phone application you can just download this question just below this video for those who are viewing us via YouTube, Facebook, or whichever social media that you are viewing us, kindly you can take a screenshot. And by the way, we have live virtual classes for CPA which are ongoing. You can always join us by just booking your space. You can talk to us using that number. You see the number that has been indicated there? 0708. 068851 you can reach us on that and we'll guide you how to join our virtual live classes we also have pre-recorded version these are the classes that you can access them at any given point in time you can take all your time study at your own pace and the beauty part of it it will also come with support class notes and revision materials which will boost your understanding and knowledge in QA and all other units for CPA. So my good students, this is what you are handling. And at this point, when you do this question, by the end of that question, I know you'll be having a very clear understanding and approach it with an open mind. Don't cram. Get the concept clearly. Okay? So this is our question, my good students. This is our question. This is what you are told in this question of four words. This is what you are told. We are told that Kena is a salesperson working for Aramis Limited and is paid a daily wage, which is a computation of a fixed pay and a commission, which is based on units sold. When Kena sells 200 units, he earns 1,200 per day. And when he, the units double, his earnings increases by 500 shillings. Uh -huh. So in this case, you are told that this person who is uh, called uh, Kena, in that case, you are told that uh, uh, when Kena, uh, told, we, are talk, we are told that uh, Kena is a salesperson working for Aram is limited and is paid daily wage, which is a computation of a fixed pay and commission, which is based on units sold. When Kena sells 20 units, he earns 1200 per day, and when the units double, his earnings increases by 500. Required. Determine the fixed basic pay and commission per day. Part B. What will be his earnings if he sells 400 units in a day? Part C of that question we are told. Suppose he targets to earn 8000 in a day. What will be the number of units sold to achieve this target? To achieve this target, my good student, that's a question that I want us to handle, and that question will open our mind wide when it comes to this concept of ours. So, kindly take a screenshot if you are taking a screenshot. Take a screenshot kindly if you are taking a screenshot so that you work it out together. Uh huh believing that you're done now let us analyze that question clearly so at this point this is what you're going to do you're asked to determine fixed basic pay and commission pay so after we have the question my good student this is what you're going to do right this is what you're going to do 
Required on that question, you are told to determine, first of all, number one, fixed basic pay and commission pay per day. So, we are told to determine, required on that question, fixed basic pay and commission. Fixed basic pay and commission paid per day. Fixed basic pay and commission paid per, per day. Fixed basic pay and commission a per day and commission per day. So this is what you are required to do, my good students. So we are going to follow, we are going to use our, we are going to use, of course, our formula here. Earnings, that is, of course, fixed plus F, fixed plus BX. So my total earnings in this case, how much will we be having? In this case, term it as what? Term it as Y. The total earnings at this point, how much will we be having how much will we be having because we were not given so look at that case you are told and is paid a daily wage which is a computation of a fixed pay and a commission which is based on unisol uh, when kenna sells 20 units he earns 1200 per day so you are told that in a day my total earnings will be 1200 if we sell how many units or rather in this case if we sell uh, in this case, if you sell uh, 40, if we sell uh, 20 units, right? So, I don't have the fixed pay. I don't have the fixed pay. Plus what? Earnings. Talk of, in this case, talk of what? Talk of, uh, talk of uh, in this case, uh, talk of uh, pay per unit. Pay per unit. Pay per unit, which is B. In this case, you aren't given B, but you're given the number of units. So, the number of units you're given, what? 20. So, you should be having... 20B. So when Kenna sells 20 units, he during that day is going to earn how much? 1200. Okay, he's going to earn 1200. And what are we told? We are told that in the event that, uh, in this case, in the event that the units doubles, his earnings increases by 500. In the event that our units doubles, in the event that our units doubles, A, plus 40 b my earnings will increase to will increase by 500 so if it increased by 500 you're talking of how much 1700 we are talking of 1700 so in that case we have derived two equations we have derived two equations so these two equations will assist us to determine the fixed basic pay which is a and commission pay per day which is b so therefore, how are we going to work it out? Let us use elimination method. Let us use the elimination method. In this case, of course, 1200, uh, 1200 minus 1700. Of course, that should give us a figure of 4. That should give us a figure of, uh, of course, 500, which will be equal to A minus A. That is, of course, minus 500. A minus A, 0. 20 minus 40, that should give us minus 20B. So what is our B? Clearly, you can agree that my B will be equal to, uh, that is case, our B should be equal to, of course, 500 divided by 20. So, I'm having 500 divided by 20, which in this case should give us, what, 25. So, you can agree that at this point, commission paid per unit is 25 shillings, is 25 shillings, is 25 shillings, is 25 shillings, right? So, that is our commission paid per day. Commission pay per day is 25 shillings. Then, after we are done with that case, after we are done with that case, my good students, after we are done with that case, we should be talking of what? Uh, we should be talking of, uh, number two, determining the fixed basic pay. To determine the fixed basic pay, what you are going to do, we are going to take our first equation. We substitute our value of B in our first equation. So that in this case, we should be having... The 1200, which is equal to A that we don't have, plus, of course, B, we've determined B to be 20 by 25. Right? 20 units by 25, because our B, we have 25. So, therefore, we should be talking of 20 by 25 to give us 500. So, my A will be equal to 1200 minus 500. So therefore, my A, in this case, we should be talking of 1,200 minus 500 to give us a figure format, 700. 
So that will be our fixed basic pay per day, our fixed basic pay per day. So we are done with this bit. So my fixed basic pay, these are fixed basic pay. So I'm having commission per day, which is uh, that, commission per day, commission per day, which in this case is uh, 25, and this is a fixed basic pay. Fixed basic pay per day, fixed basic pay per day. So I'm having 700 shillings. So that is the first step that we need to work it out. I know a lot of you will be wondering why you did what you did here. Remember, in this case, it's negative, negative, so it cancels. So that's why you took 500 divided by 20. After we are done with that bit, my good students, what was the second? What was the second? What was the second question? The second question, what were we asked? That was our number one. Uh huh. Let us go to number two. Question: See what you were asked, and this is what you asked in number two. Uh huh. Number two, you we are told what were we asked? We are asked to part B. What will be his earnings if he sells four hundred units in a day? Earnings if he sells, earnings if he sells 400 units in a day. Earnings if he sells, if Kena sells 400 units in a day. Earnings if Kena sells 400 units in a day. So how will we go about that? That will be very simple, my good student, because here we can form our equation, our linear equation in the form of y is equal to a that will not change, which is fixed plus bx. In this case, I'm having our b to be 25x. So this is our equation, right? This is our linear equation. That is our linear equation. So what you are going to do in this case is just to substitute x with 400. So that my total earnings will be 700 plus 25 by 400. So as at the end of the day, if you are to talk of our total earnings, how much will we be talking about? 25 by 400, that should, of course, give us 10,000. So my Y, in this case, we should be talking of 10,700. Because you are taking 700 plus 25 by 400, which should give us, what, 10,700 total earnings for that day. So we are done with part two of the question. Part three of the question, what were we asked? Part three of the question, not what we asked. Let us see what you are asked and see how we can handle the same. So part B, we are asked to uh, suppose he targets to earn 8,000 in a day. What would be the number of units to be sold to achieve this target? In this case, our Y, suppose Kena targets to earn 8,000. Suppose he targets to earn. Targets to earn. Targets to earn, targets to earn, targets to earn 8,000 shillings in a day. 8,000 shillings in a day. So we are asked the number of units to be sold. Number of units that Kena should, sell, to, should sell. So in this case, my total earnings is 8,000. Okay? Which will be equal to 700. Correct? Plus, I don't have the number of units, but we have 25 uh, X. So, in this case, we are asked what will be the number of units that Kena at least should sell for him to earn 8,000. That will be very simple because what are we going to do here, my good students? We can agree and say that I'm having 8,000 minus 700 will be equal to what? 25x, right? So, in a safe, you are saying that therefore, uh, talk about 8,000 minus 700. Of course, I'm having 7,300. So, we're talking of 7,300 is equal to 25x. So, what would be our x? What would be our x? What would be our x? So, you can agree our x will be divided by 25, which in this case, we're talking of how many units? 292 units. 292 units. So, this is what Kenna should sell for him to earn how much? 8,000 shillings in a day. And that is one major application of sales, or rather of linear function. And this is what you are required to do, my good student. As simple as that. So long as you have the concept right, you'll find that things will just flow, things will just flow, things will just flow, things will just flow. Now, 
after we have uh, looked at that question my good students i want us to go to the second application which is cost volume profit analysis unless anyone has a question who will want molimu to explain it further i'll be here for you guys so you can always reach us on that number and uh, let us get uh, let us get in touch so that you can be assisted in this remember this qa foundation level this is under the revised syllabus this is under the revised syllabus which was just introduced by Kasnev recently so after we are done with that case my good students let us proceed to application number two cost volume profit analysis so you'll allow mwalimu to erase here you'll allow mwalimu to erase here you will allow mwalimu to erase here then we proceed to number two we proceed to application number two cvp cvp cost volume profit analysis so talk about cost volume profit analysis cost volume profit analysis cost volume profit analysis cost volume profit analysis is our number two application cost volume profit analysis is our number two application so anytime we are talking about cost volume profit analysis my good students what should you understand the whole concept behind cost volume profit analysis we just be looking at uh this is a technique that you normally tend to use to identify or to determine the effect of profit or how our profit will change as a result of changes in what as a result of changes in cost as a result of changes in volume of production as a result of changes in sales mix so the effect of our future profits as a result of changes in cost as a result of changes in uh, sales volume uh, sales mix as a result in changes in volume of production that's the concept behind cost volume profit analysis also known as what cvp analysis also known as cvp analysis also known as cvp analysis and the main application behind cost volume profit analysis we normally term it as what as break even point so after we've gotten the concept behind cvp the whole concept behind it look at the main application behind cost volume profit analysis main application of a cvp analysis we normally term it as what we normally term it as break even point we normally term it as what break even point bep so this is a main application of what main application of cvp so my good students for us to understand break even point basically we are looking at the level of production where our profit will be equal to zero or rather uh, we normally tend to say the level of production where our total revenue will be equal to our total cost level of production where our total revenue will be equal to our total cost that is what you're timing it as what as break even point we are saying at break even point at break even point our total revenue will be equal to our total cost same case you are saying that it is a, pro, a level of production where my profit is equal to zero where our profit is equal to zero that is what you're timing it as what as break even point as break even point now understanding this concept there are some main functions under this case that you must always tend to over the back of our mind main functions of break even point main functions of break even point that should always click at the back of our mind or we want to see how we can derive the break even point so this case you're going to start with revenue function we're going to start with revenue function Basically, to determine our total revenue with the concept that we do have, we know very well that to determine our total revenue, we normally tend to talk of what? Our selling price per unit represented by P, 
we multiply by our number of units represented by Q. So P, selling price per unit, Q, this represents what the number of units that we are selling. So in other words, we can say that my total revenue is equal to what? PQ. That is our first equation. That is our first equation. The second equation talk about what? Talk about cost function. Talk about our cost function. Talk about our cost function. How will we determine our cost function? To determine our cost function, it will be very important for us to recall that for us to determine our total cost, we normally tend to talk about our fixed costs plus variable cost. Fixed cost plus variable cost will give us what? Fixed cost plus variable cost will give us our total cost. And it is at this point that it is very key also to note that for us to determine our total variable cost, for us to determine our total variable cost, we should understand that you are going to take our variable cost per unit represented by V. Variable cost per unit represented by V. Variable cost per unit represented by V times the number of units. So, in other words, you are talking of what? VQ. That should give us what? Our total variable cost. So, V represents variable cost per unit, whereas Q represents the number of units. So, we can confidently come and say that our variable cost total, we should be having VQ. Therefore, at this point, we can all agree that for us to determine our total cost or total cost function, we are going to take fixed cost represented by F plus VQ represented by total variable cost. So this will be our second function, cost function. That will be our cost function. Now, after we are done with that case, let us look at our third function. Let us talk about our third function, which is profit function. Talk about our profit function. Understanding our profit function, my good students, understanding our profit function, this is what we should have at the back of our mind. Talk about profit function. I want us to understand the profit function. So, for profit function, we know very well that for us to determine our profit, we normally tend to talk about our total revenue minus our total cost. Minus our total cost. Minus our total cost. And at this point, you can agree that our total revenue, we can clearly see here, we had what? PQ, right? We had PQ. That was our total revenue. That was our total revenue. That was our total revenue. Then, at this point, minus our total cost. Our total cost, we had here. Fixed cost plus VQ. So I'm having our fixed cost plus VQ to give us what? To give us our total cost. So breaking this formula down, we can say that our PQ minus fixed cost, if we open our bracket, of course, I'll be having minus VQ. That should give us what? Our profit. Breaking it down further, we are talking of PQ minus VQ minus F. We are having at least common terms. So in this case, the lifetimes I should kind of say P minus V will give us what is known as what? Q minus uh, F. P minus V, Q minus F. And at this point, I want us to grasp this concept clearly. Anytime we are talking about P minus V, remember P, we mentioned this stands for what? Selling price per unit. V, we said, it stands for what? Variable cost per unit. So anytime we'll be talking about selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit, that will give us what is known as what? Contribution margin. That will give us what is known as contribution margin. Commonly known as what? CM. Commonly known as CM. So CM will always give us our selling price per unit, which is represented by P, Minus variable cost per unit, which is represented by V. So that should give us what is known as what? Contribution margin. Contribution margin. 
basically contribution margin you are looking at it in this case we are talking about our selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit minus variable cost per unit now after we have uh, talked of that after we have a uh, talk of that it will also be very ideal for us to say that our profit is the same as if you are talking about cmq minus fixed cost cmq minus fixed cost cmq minus fixed cost because you are talking of selling price per unit minus variable cost which give us contribution margin times q minus what minus fixed cost that is what we should be having so this is our profit function this is our profit function this is our profit function so we are having how many functions my good students three functions number one we are having revenue function number two we are having cost function number three we are having aspect of what profit function profit function and what have we said we have agreed that at break even point our total revenue is equal to our total cost or in other words you are saying that my profit at this point is equal to what is equal to zero our profit is equal to zero so how will we achieve our break even point then to achieve our break even point my good students we need to equate this profit to zero so you are saying that my profit here is equal to zero meaning that you're talking about cmq minus fiscal should give us zero should give us zero should give us zero so i need to make the level of production we need to equate uh, the level of production where our profit will be equal to zero so therefore we need to make q the subject of this formula of ours and how will we make q the subject of this formula that will be very easy right that will be very easy because you are going to take we are going to take this we are going to take our of course uh f will be equal to cmq i need q to be the subject so divide by cm divide by cm so you can agree and say that our q here will be equal to f divided by cm and this is our break even point in quantity that is our break even point in quantity that will give us our break even point in quantity the level of production where my profit is equal to zero should be determined as fixed cost we divide by contribution margin fixed cost we divide by contribution margin fixed cost we divide by contribution margin so after we are done with that bit my good students what if we are asked break even point in value how will we determine our break even point in value to determine our break even point in value to determine our break even point in value to determine our bep in value to determine our bp in value how are we going to work it out how are we going to work it out break even point in value this will be very simple my good students because what you are going to do we can work it out using two formulas we can take our face cost we divide by contribution margin times what our selling price times our selling price times our selling price that will give us a break even point in value for qa the easiest and best way to use we can say that break even point in value we can take our face cost to divide by cmr contribution margin ratio contribution margin ratio contribution margin ratio that is what uh or rather so we can determine our break even point in value break even point in value still you can take that or alternatively we can say fiscals divided by cs ratio so you choose the one that you feel comfortable with cs ratio basically is contribution divided by divided by sales contribution divided by sales now at this point a good student will ask molimu suppose i'm not given cmr how are we going to determine our cmr how are we going to determine our contribution margin ratio that will be very simple my good students to determine our cmr we are going to take 
our contribution margin recall how to determine our contribution margin we divide by our selling price or talk about price basically normally denoted by p just take p that should give us what our cmr we are taking our contribution margin recall how to determine our contribution margin we determine by or rather divide by p that will give us what that will give us cmr that will give us cmr that should give us cmr alternatively for you to determine your cmr contribution margin ratio cmr stands for contribution margin ratio alternatively for you to determine your cmr you can take 1 minus uh, variable uh, talk of a variable cost ratio cvr variable or rather talk about a vcr variable cost ratio variable cost ratio vcr vcr 1 minus vcr will give us what will give us cmr vcr basically variable cost ratio we normally tend to talk variable cost we divide by our selling price that would give us our vcr variable cost we divide by our price that would give us our vcr so anytime we are talking about break even point we can always consider this case my good students we can always consider this concept here it is very important and it will assist us a lot it will really 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 assist us a lot now probably another equation that again we must be very good at this is when probably you are asked to determine the target sales maybe you can be told to determine the target sales target sales revenue or rather target sales or rather target revenue how will you determine your target revenue to determine your target revenue in this case that would be very easy because this is how we are going to do to determine our target sales target sales in value we are going to take of course our fixed costs we add our profit that you are given the target profit we divide by cmr we divide by cmr that should give us what our target sales in value our target sales in value our target sales in value what about our target sales in units target sales in quantity very simple fixed cost plus profit we divide by cm only contribution margin so you'll find that this is what you are supposed to understand when it comes to the equation of cvp they are usually very simple if you follow them step by step and the beauty part of it is that we've looked at these steps one by one. For us to cement this concept, my good students, for us to cement this concept very well, I want us to consider an illustration question. Of course, I want us to consider an illustration question. And this is our illustration question. This is our illustration question. This is our illustration question here. Let me share it with us. Kindly, you can take a screenshot of the question so that when you, when you are revising, you should be very good at. So, application of linear function. In this case, you are talking about CVP analysis. You are talking about CVP analysis. And this is what you are told. This is what you are told that explain what is break even analysis as used in quantitative technique uh -huh. in that case molimo have explained it very well but b puda development company pdc is a small real estate developer operating in the eastlands valley it has seven permanent employees whose monthly salaries are given below monthly salary then we are also told that pdc leases pdc talk about you're told that uh, pdc Leases are building for 20,000 per month. Mark that word per month. The cost of suppliers, utilities, and lease equipment runs for another 30,000 per month. PDC builds only one style of house in the valley. Land for each house, now I'm given on a per unit basis. Land for each house costs 550. Supplies and others run for another 280 per house. Total labor cost amounts to 200,000 per house. 
The one sales representative uh, P of PDC is paid a commission of 20000 on the sale of each house. The selling price of the house is 11, 1,150,000. So remember always the concept of uh, direct or rather variable cost and fixed cost concept. That will apply there very well. Required, identify all the cost and denote the marginal revenue and marginal cost for each house. Determine the monthly cost function. Uh, revenue function and the profit function. Determine the break-even point for monthly sales of the houses. Determine the monthly profit of 12 houses per month. Then you are told what are some of the simply uh, what are what are the uh, what are some of uh, the simplifying assumptions in Part B above. Ideally, assumptions of CVP. Ideally, assumptions of CVP. Assumptions of CVP. So, my good students. I want us to meet in the next session where we are going to clear that question. So if you've not downloaded MDRASA app, go to Play Store right now, download MDRASA, you create your account, and start studying with us. Remember, our videos are updated as per the revised syllabus. So you will be very, very uh, prepared probably for those students who are planning to do the exams in November, December. So to this point, thank you so much, my good students, and let us meet in the next session. Thank you.